My name is Dr. Awe Emmanuel. I'm here for ECO ECN419, which is the basic concept of finance. Um, finance is very important, very, very important in economics and to every other aspect of um, uh, this thing. The, concept of, uh, the basic concept of finance is a three credit load and is a very important cause for all economists because we have different branches of economics, like the financial economics. So we have majority of financial economics, the basic concept of finance is very important. And this will complement all other financial courses we'll be doing from our uh, basic level, from 200 level, which is the principle of finance. So this will complement all those. So we'll be looking at the various uh, topics under this, um, um, this course. Some of the, the general overview of this course is to be able to uh, uh, program our mind towards the area of finance. As I said, we have different branches of finance, which this is one of them. So we'll be looking at some basic um, topics under this. We we uh, to look at the, the meaning of finance. We'll also be looking at the importance of finance, uh, the, the financial decision, which the various decisions made by financial economists, which this will be able to under we able to bring up to us that the, the decision we are able to make a prudent decision, which is very important to any financial economist. Then the various techniques of investment analysis. Before we go into any investment, we have to analyze and see the best method and see through this, this method and see how which of these investments should be accepted because human want is unlimited, but the resources are limited. So on this basis, we'll be looking at various techniques of which we can use to analyze investment so that we're able to take the best decision in our investment analysis. Then the roles of financial market in the economy, what are the roles? We'll also be looking at those roles and we'll also be looking at the basic objective of financial managers. Who are the financial managers? We'll be looking at that and what are their functions because it's very important and the, because the financial man managers will have to take some basic decision. How would they, what are the relationship between the decision they make and as well as the financial management and to also understand the cash flow analysis. The cash flow analysis, the in and out of money within and outside the firm is very important. Not just the firm, even the government is very important. So we'll be looking at all this and this will be able to be able to point us to, because it's, 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 uh, it's one thing to have one billion outside, but when you, are lack of, when you lack of cash for day to day running of a business, it's a problem. So cash flow analysis is very important. So all these are the courses we'll be looking at under the basic concept of finance. Okay, the general information, blah, blah, all those things are being, uh, will be summarized and we we'll move straight to the um, first session. The first session is to understand the basic concept of finance. What is finance? When we look at finance, at the end of this course, we should be able to understand the meaning of finance. Yes, the mini, basic meaning of finance, which we will to understand, they identify the basic principle of finance, then the importance of finance, understand the roles of financial managers, as I said, and understand the federal decision of financial managers. This is uh, the thing we'll be looking at for this first session today. And the, for, to start with, what is finance? The meaning of finance, okay? Finance has been defined by many scholars. But to crown it or to summarize the whole thing, we said finance is defined as the provision of fund and for, for, for and management of money for individual government as well as the organization. Not only the government, not only the organization, but even for individual. Okay, so not just to provide the fund, but the management of the fund is very important. And this is what financial manager does. Okay, and for a personal reason too, we need to understand how funds should be managed because it's very difficult to gather or to obtain fund or to source for fund. But that's why it's also important to be able to manage it adequately. So that is why the uh, uh, sources of uh, the fund should be adequately managed. Okay, then the, also to also move further, we also look at the finance as different segments. We have looked at it as terms, in terms of banking, in terms of leverage. That is the, when we're talking of leverage, we're looking at the, uh, the liquidity between your finance or looking at the, uh, we're looking at the, um, uh, either, at, either at equity or debt, okay? In, in looking at finance, we, we source for finance through liquidity or that is uh, sourcing for it for by sharing shares or we source for it from borrowing, 
we'll be able to look at this in the course of this lecture. Then in terms of credit too, we look at finance in terms of credit, okay, and uh, even capital market, money, and as well as investment. We'll be looking at this, in the course of this lecture, we'll be looking at how these finance are broken down into these various segments. Then we also want to look at the principles of finance. The principle of finance has many principles. Finance have many principles. The first principle is the principle of risk and returns. Okay, finance has to do with risk. Okay, because it's possible when we are putting our money on a business, there's no certainty that this money is coming back. Okay, so it's a risk, a great risk. Okay, it's a great risk. So what is the rate of return? That is why we have to do some. We have to test and see the kind of business we are putting our money on first before we put our money into it okay we are, that's why we need all these uh, investment analysis to be able to test the kind of business we want to put our money on so that if we, are, we have to be 100 percent sure if not 100 percent at least 80 percent 90 percent sure that this more this business we are putting our money on should be able to bring back return and what the rate of return not just return what's the rate of return that is why when we have three or four businesses we have to test the, each of these business and see what rate of return each of these business are bringing to us. Because it's wanted to put our money, it's another thing for our money to come back to us. Okay, then time value of money. We have to also consider the time value of money is one of the basic principles of finance. Because the 10,000 naira of 10 years ago is different from the 10,000 naira 10, of today. So the time value of money must be considered as economists. We should be able to forecast the next, we have various techniques of forecasting. That's why in our econometrics, we do a lot of forecasting a lot. So we'll be able to, be able to forecast what and what uh, 10,000 of today will be in the next five years, in the next 10 years, because the value of money differs based on the, uh, according to the, uh, the various times. So the, the time value of money must also be consider is very, very important in terms of finance. So and another one is profitability and liquidity ratio. As I said, it's one thing to have 10 billion millionaire outside and you don't have money for day-to-day -day running of a business. It's a problem. So the liquidity ratio is one of the things that is very, very important in finance. We have to know how the money, the money we run for day-to-day -day running of a business must be available. It must be available. That is why when we are looking at the ratio analysis, we'll be able to do a lot of this and see whether a firm is actually doing well or not. Because a healthy firm must have money for day-to-day -day running of a business. But even a firm does not have money for day-to-day, -day, it doesn't matter how much they have outside. But a day-to-day -day run of a business is very important. And that is why there must be cash for day-to-day -day activities in a business. So it's one of the uh, principles of finance. The other one is cash flow principle. The cash flow principle is also very important because the money that goes in, the money that comes in. So this is, we have to be able to, as a financial manager, we must be able to manage what we receive from what goes out. Our expenditure and our income must be able to be married together. So as a financial manager, we have to do this a lot and make sure that this complements themselves. So another one is diversity principle. As a financial manager, we must be able to diversify, so able to reduce risk. We have to reduce the risk as much as possible. And in reducing risk, we must be able to diversify our businesses. So when we diversify, even when one is not bringing money, the other one will be able to complement the other one. So because at times we have up and down, there's no business that is static. We have fluctuation in business. At times there will be boom. At times we experience recession. So the, because of this reason, we have to be able to diversify our businesses so that we'll be able to have different various businesses so that when one is not bringing, the other one will be able to cover up. And that is the, then the AJ principle. So all these principles are what uh, we look at under the principle of finance. Then the last one, the next one is I want to look at the types of finance. We have various types of finance. We have the public finance, we have the private, we have the personal, and we have the corporate finance. When we're talking about public finance, we're looking at the finance by the government. Well, the word public is the government. So government expenditure and revenue is very important. How do government raise their revenue? It's through taxation and other means, through uh, levy by uh, organizations from, uh, from uh, get levy from organizations, taxation of tax from organizations, even from individual, in the personal, personal income tax. So all these are the revenue for the government. And government to also embark on many expenditures. The expenditure like creation of infrastructures, giving back to the society. So government have to give back to the society. 
and doing all this construction of road, provision of pipe bond water, all these are expenditure of the government. So in for government to meet up with these obligations, they need finance. So that's why government revenue is very important. So that's what we're looking at under the public uh, finance. Then the private finance, even without with government, even we have private organization too, they also need finance. So this is also, if not just finance, their finances must be also be complemented with their expenditure because they are both private and um, both, both um, uh, income as well as their expenditure. Then we have personal finance. As I said, the same way goes with us. That's why this study is very, very important, not just to our financial economy, even for personal purpose. Because every day, day to day basis, we buy things, we will receive income and spend our income. So we must be able to manage what we receive compared to what we spend. So for personal reason, our personal income is very important. So we'll be able to manage our finance and see how our expenditure must not be greater than our revenue. So this are uh, also for personal. Then for corporate finance, it's also very, um, excuse me. All right. So for corporate finance too, it's the same thing, one of the um, types of finance for corporate uh, organization. So this, all these are various types of finance. Then what are the important? What is the rationale be behind studying this? It's very important. This course is very, very important. Very important to study this because of various reasons. The first reason is helps to set goals for future. When we have, when we have an adequate knowledge of this study, we'll be able to set our objectives. Okay. When we have our income, we know our finance, we know our uh, income, we'll be able to plan our expenditure. Because when we have our income, we'll be able to plan how we are going to spend it. Okay? We'll be able to manage our finances very, very adequate. So that is one of the reasons why we study this uh, course. Another one is plans and control company spending. Even organizations too, they have spent it, they have expenditure, they will be able to manage it and plan adequately because who will, will fail to plan is planning to fail. So we have to plan on our expenditure because in economics, we are being prudent in economics as economists, we'll be able to manage our why they said why are we prudent be prudent because we don't spend beyond our mean our means. Okay, we plan based on our income. Okay, we should not if you are an economist and you are spending uh, spend, uh, buying, borrowing money to, to, to do your finances, you are not a good economy. You must be able to plan based on your income. You know, if your income is low, you plan low. Okay? Your ex expenditure must be very low. If your income is high, you also increase your expenditure. So these are the things that we do in economies. Okay? Another one is that... Sorry. Another significance is that it ensures sufficient financing. Okay? When we have an uh, adequate plan, okay, we'll be able to have our finances, we'll be able to, because when we plan, this is how much I want to spend, then I'll know that this money may not be enough, then I'll be able to work more and look for other sources, and other sources will be able to give me more uh, revenue. That make sure that the customer pay their bills. That's one of the reasons why we do it. When we, when we uh, have a certain amount of money to be spent, and our expenditure is huge, We'll be able to put my effort and make sure that the customers pay their bills. When they pay their bills, we're able to have their finance. But when we don't even have all this, we don't know how much we are earning, we don't know how much our income is supposed to be, we'll be relaxed. Okay, and that will lead to a problem. So this will ginger us that putting more effort and make sure that our credit, our debtors pay their bills. Then invest company make more uh, invest company money wisely. Okay, we'll be able to, how do we invest our money? Even when we have huge amount of money, our investment is very, very important. We'll be looking at it in, this, in, the, uh, in the course of this lecture because we'll be able to, it's one of the way of financial manager decision. How, where do we invest? Okay, where do we invest? We don't just invest anyhow. Okay, we have to look at what brings more returns. Not just the return, we look at the, consider the risk, consider the returns and other factors. These are the things we look at before we tend to invest our money. Then who are the financial managers? When we talk of financial manager, finance manager, we look at it in terms of production manager, the human resource manager, quality control manager, and the marketing manager. All these, they work together because there's no way you talk of finance manager without talking about this because they split into various segments of this. Then, importance of financial manager. Why do we need financial manager? Okay, financial manager is very important. Number one, for financial planning. 
Because as a financial manager, you'll be able to plan adequately. Because I said it earlier that when we fail to plan, we plan to we are planning to fail. So that is why, as a financial manager, we'll be able to plan on the fund we have. Because we said it initially that the meaning of finance is to be able to manage the money we have. Okay. So as a as a financial management farm manager, we'll be able to plan adequately on the fund we have, the acquisition of fund. When we were as a financial manager, how do we acquire this fund? How do we acquire it? It's very important. It's the duty of the financial manager to be able to acquire enough fund, either by borrowing, either by sourcing, any means of sourcing for fund. We have to, as a financial manager, you must be able to identify because at times we have some risky business. A risky business, which kind of fund we use, which kind of borrowing we will do, will you borrow money or we use owner's equity? We have to consider all these things before we decide to fund a particular business. The improper use of fund as a financial manager, we must be able to use the fund adequately. Okay, it's very important as a financial manager. Then financial decision. We have three different decisions of financial manager. We'll be looking at it in the course of this lecture because this is very important. Decision of the financial manager. What decision do they make? What role do they play? They don't just take decision based on just a mere look. They take a scientific approach. They take some methods, methods by looking at the business they need to invest on, the business they need to finance, their finances, as well as other means. So all this is what we'll be looking at in the course of this. So the financial decision is one of the role of the financial management in, manager. It increase the value of the firm. When a firm is doing well, everybody wants to be identified with the firm. Nobody wants to be identified with failure. As a successful person, people will want to identify with you. So a successful company, then their reputation will grow. So when their reputation is growing, then they will become a, somebody in the society. Okay? So it's very, very important. So the, a, financial, a financial manager will make this happen by performing its role adequately. And lastly, promoting savings. Savings leads to investment. When we have more savings, investment will increase. So that is why, as a financial manager, when we have huge income, if our income has been increased, then it will, it will stimulate our savings. And saving leads to investment, which will lead to more investment and more less uh, unemployment in our society. And it will even lead to economic growth. So that is why financial manager, managers have long growth uh, to play in mobile, uh, uh, stable, uh, uh, promoting the growth of our nation. So this is also one of it. So all these are the importance of financial management. Okay, then financial decision. Financial decision, as I said, that there are three basic uh, decisions a financial manager needs to make. The first one is the investment decision. The second one is the financial decision. And the third one is the dividend decision. Okay, these decisions are very crucial because you don't just take decisions based on mere look. You take decisions based on facts. Okay, in economics, we have difference between um, forecasting and prediction. Okay, prediction is when you just sit down and say, oh, this man, you'll be great tomorrow. But forecasting is, I say, you'll be great tomorrow because you are doing this now. So forecasting, it mean, we mean, when we say forecasting in economics, we mean we are looking at the future based on fact, present situation. Okay, so the same way, when a financial manager wants to take a decision, he based decision based on fact. That's why we have some uh, uh, scientific tools to be able to test and see whether this decision we are making is worth it or not. So that's why we have three different decisions. We have the investment decision, the financial decision, as well as the dividend decision to make. Then the first one, which is the investment decision. We're looking at whether we should take a decision to go by the long term or the short term. Okay? Or when we're looking at investing, are we investing on the long term or we are investing on the short term? In the long term, we talk of capital budgeting. Okay? You, as we know that, when we are looking at a long term, it takes longer time for our for returns to come back. Okay, when we invest our money for a long term project, it takes a long a lot of time. But that kind of investment can attract huge returns. Then we can have we can decide to invest our money on a short term. Okay, which is when we invest our money, which can we be working on working capital management? If we invest our money on that kind of uh, business, it takes a short time, but it may not attract which amount of money. But that depends on the kind of fund we are using. We're taking this decision. It depends on the kind of fund we are using. For instance, we are sourcing for a loan from bank. 
that is going to give us for like two years. So we have to look at the kind of business we have to invest it on. Because if we invest it on a business that will take like 10 years, it may not work in terms of long-term investment. It may not work. So the everything is a function of, it's now a function of the kind of fund. What kind of fund are we using? Okay, so the kind of fund we are using will determine whether we should invest it on a long-term or a short-term project. So this has, is, is a decision that is left for the uh, financial manager to make. Then the second decision is the financial decision. Financial decision is that in terms of financing our business, what kind of uh, finance do we use? What kind of um, 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 means of source of, of fund would we use? We, can, we have debt and we have equity. Okay, equity, equity is when we source for fund through the owners of the business, owner's fund. Okay, when we use owner's fund, owner's capital to source for a business is uh, uh, equity. We mean equity. Then debt is when we borrow to finance a business. Okay, so that's the difference between the two. The de debt is for, is for uh, when we borrow to finance a business, while equity is when we use owner's fund. Okay, so at times when we're embarking on a very risky business, it's not advisable to use more of debt for, for a risky business. It's advisable to use owner's capital. Okay, owner's capital because a risky business might be successful or might fail. So when we use debt, it's a problem. Okay, and also it's not advisable for a firm to have more of debt compared to equity. Okay, so a financial manager must know all this. So all this thing will be treated in our ratio analysis because according to the section, he said, uh, he said, they said that two ratio one is what is more appropriate. Okay, I mean one ratio one, sorry, one ratio one, that is the debt and uh, the debt and equity must not be equal. Okay, which must have more of equity compared to debt. Because when we build our house on people's fund, it's a problem. What if the owners remove their capital? What happened to the business? So that is why we must not build our business on pure debt. Okay? So it's advisable. The financial management must be able to advise the management that it is more appropriate to use more of equity compared to debt. So this is a decision that a financial manager has to make, which is very, very important because we cannot build ourselves on debt. Okay? We have to use owner's capital so that we can know that yes even when the owner when the owner of the debt collect their money our business will still stand so this is very very important as well so and the third one which is the dividend decision the dividend decision we can have retain any and we can also have dividend okay how do we distribute the dis dividend should we distribute it or we should retain it so at time we tend to expand the business when we want to expand a business we either borrow source for more fund to be able to expand a bit the business or we retain or we plug back those profits we made instead of sharing to the shareholder of course one of the obligation of the company is to distribute dividend but at times you can withhold the dividend and use to expand the business instead of borrowing 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 attract there's cost of borrowing okay so instead of acquiring more borrowing then we can retain either retain the earnings or we decide to share the dividend. Dividend is what the money we share, the profit we share to the shareholders. It's called dividend. So that dividend is either we share it to the shareholders or we retain it and use it to expand the business instead of borrowing more funds to expand the business or to improve the business. So this decision is also a decision by the uh, financial manager. So this is also one of the, the uh, decisions they have to make and see whether to retain the earnings or to uh, share the dividend to the shareholders. So that's that. Then, at the, uh, we'll be, with this course, we've seen that we've been able to establish uh, the, uh, the meaning and of concept of finance. We've been able to establish that. And we've seen the importance of finance at various level. Uh, because if finance is very important. There's nothing we can do without this. Finance is very important, as we said. That is very, very important. And there's no way we can uh, improve our business without finance because there are a lot of uh, business, uh, brain today. A lot of people have different ideas. Well, because there's no fund. So all those ideas are dead. Uh, Miles Moran said that the richest place in the world is the grave. Why is it the grave? Because he said many talents have been sunk into the grave. OK? 
okay, many on 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 tap talent have been sunk in the grave. So that the richest place in the world is not the Nigerian oil well, not the Ghanaian gold well, but the richest place in the world is the is the grave because many on tap talent. Why are they not on? Why are they untapped? Because there was no fund. So if there are adequate fund, you will see many ideas, great ideas that will be put in practice. And now that we have massive unemployment today, all those things will be reduced to the barely minimum. Then we've we'll also been able to look at the principle and types of finance. We have various types of finance. The principle of finance will be able to look at that. And the roles of financial manager, which they perform, all these roles, they are very important, very crucial, because you will also want to have to balance the two, okay? We have to balance the two between the shareholders as well as the company. So you, the role, the, those they are crucial roles. That's why we call it crucial roles. Okay, which they have to take a uh, great decision on which they have to balance the two. Then the financial decision. So the next class, so this is to establish this course, like introduction to this course. So these are the basic things we'll be working on because since we know that this thing, like the financial manager decision, they are very important. So now we have to. What do we do for them to be able to take decisions? What do we do for us to be able to mobilize funds? What do they do for us to be able to take, um, to practice these principles and put them in place? What do we do? So we have a lot of scientific approach now. We don't just look at the firm and just decide. We have a lot of scientific, we have a lot of methods to use. So that we'll, be, we'll be taking, we'll be looking at ratio analysis to be able to take a great concrete decision. We'll be looking at the investment analysis. We will look at various investment analysis so that we'll be able to choose the best business we can invest our money on that will bring a great return because the aim of every business owner is to be able to make profit. Not just to make profit, but to be able to make huge profit. Okay, that's the aim of every business owner. So for them to achieve this objective, we need all these techniques to be able to choose the best business that can bring us the best returns. Okay, so that's why all this is just an introduction to what we are intended to do under this course. So we'll be looking at all these various um, techniques to be able to help us to be able to take the best decision and that will help us to make uh, adequate profit. Then the next session, we'll be looking at the various techniques of investment analysis. This various section of investment analysis is to be able to be able to point us to the right direction. Okay, for instance, we want to we want to we have like three or four mutually exclusive projects that we want to embark on. And we're looking for the one that will give us the best returns. How do we choose among these four? Okay, so we'll be applying all these techniques, okay, to be able to know which of these will give us the best returns, okay? So this will be able to point us to the right direction of which we'll be able to help to achieve the objective of business owner of profit uh, mobilization. So we'll be able to help them to be able to make their profit, which profit, Okay, so this is what we're going to do the next time we're looking at various techniques for investment analysis. Thank you. <music>